In this video, we're going to have a look at drawing circles, or sometimes referred to as bubbles, onto our map using IconMap Pro in Power BI. So let's kick off by adding IconMap Pro onto our report canvas. Let's resize it so that it's filling most of our report canvas. And then I'm going to drag on some of my fields. This is open crime data with a geography hierarchy. So let's drag on crime count into circle size. So I want the size of my circles to depend on how many crimes in that location. Let's drag on latitude and longitude. You'll notice that latitude and longitude uh, default to average. And then I'm going to drag on um, some items from my geography hierarchy. So let's start with local authority. So we get a single local authority now, so a single circle for each local authority. But I'm also going to drag on lower super output areas. And then I'm going to drag on this lat lot combined field. So this is a latitude and longitude combined into a single field. And that effectively gives us a, a unique reference for each location where crimes have occurred. Let's filter our report so that we're just looking at London and we still get a circle for each of those local authorities. But I can use Power BI's drill down options to be able to drill down through that geographic hierarchy into lower super output areas and now into that Langlock combined field at the bottom of my hierarchy. And I can drill back up again. I can also use this double drop down arrow to drill down all of those local authorities at the same time. So here we've got a circle for each um, low super output area, and I can click it again, and we'll get a circle for each Langlock combined field. But you'll notice that we've got this bit of a, um, a vertical line here. And the reason for that is there's actually more than 30,000 locations referenced in our crime data for London alone. Um, but most visuals in Power BI are constrained for only showing 30,000 rows of data at a time. But in Icon Map, we have the option to exceed this. Now we need to use this with caution because when we start going above 30,000 rows of data, we might start to see some performance implications. But regardless, let's change that to 60,000, for example. And hopefully now we'll see when this visual is updated, we'll see that all of those additional points are now being plotted. So we get to be able to see all of the detail. And um, we can also format our shapes a little bit better. Let's make some of those outlines a little bit thinner. And I think what we'll also do is change the circle outlines to be black. Now, we're obviously plotting more than 30,000 points here at a time, and things are, are getting a little bit difficult to see. So perhaps what might be useful to do is to turn on clustering. And I can do that by choosing this cluster circles option. And now instead of showing all of those items of data at the same time, we get these individual circles which show how many points of data there are in each one. So if I click here, you'll see that every time I click, they expand out and we get a new set of circles. And these are color coded um, from dark orange through to, to green. And as I go all the way in, eventually we'll get to individual points of data. And if I zoom back out again, you'll see the clustering return. You'll also notice that we get these polygons appearing as we mouse over each of these points. And these represent the locations with which um, the underlying points for each of these circles are located in. If you're not keen on the, uh, the color style, then we of course get the option to set all of those different colors um, and you can define your own color scheme quite happily. Uh, you can also turn on and off that polygon feature and change the colors and styling of that too.